Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Jeebus Crisp. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the, <laughs> I want to call it the Ironton Saga, um, there was a sergeant not too long ago that was arrested for drug trafficking, um, tampering with evidence, and domestic violence. Okay, now this is the same officer that when I asked for a supervisor from Officer Akers, little fiasco, um, came on the scene and, you know, basically slammed the door on me and told me, I hope you have an expensive effing lawyer. Um, so I wanted to talk about Officer Akers. When he pulled us over, well, before that, we were going down 3rd Street, which is like the main street in Ironton, it's like the main drag, and we passed the car wash there on the 1700 block, for those of you who are familiar, and when we passed the car wash, we saw Akers sitting there with his, like the nose of his cruiser, barely kind of poking out. Um, as soon as we passed him, he jumps out, and he's like three cars back, and he starts following us. So we know he's following us, we just don't know why, you know, because at that time, uh, this was only like the second time we'd been pulled over after we witnessed uh, Officer McKnight recover my wallet from a parking lot of a Dollar General, and, uh, Basically, he didn't want to give it back. He said he didn't find it, but we watched him pick it up. You know. Off the topic. Um, so, when we got pulled over by Acres, first of all, he said that we didn't use our turn signal 100 feet prior to, to where we turned in, which was a lie. Um, you know, I, I wonder, you know, how they can use that uh, as an excuse to pull people over and how it flies in court, you know, because it's not like they have markers uh, on the sidewalk that say this is how many feet you are from this parking lot. And it's not like they have freaking high-tech contact lenses that they wear that measure distance, you know. So he's just, it's just a judgment. There's no way to prove this. It's just his word against yours. So that's like a go-to thing. If you just want to pull somebody over and escalate so you can run your little fishing expedition, you know. Um, but once again, off topic. So when the supervisor gets there, he has two supervisors, actually. One is Fouch and one is Spolgeri. Uh, he tells both his supervisors that he was doing his drug interdiction case and that he had indicators. That's all he said is that, you know, he said, uh, I had indicators because I was doing my drug interdiction case. Um, Fouts was like, I don't want to hear none of that. Why'd you pull him over, right? But it's interesting to think about that word, indicator. Because at that point, the only indicators he had was that, and it says this on the police report, was that he witnessed a four-door vehicle with two occupants and Kentucky plates. That was his indicator that we were involved in some kind of drug activity. Right? That's a messed up thing to put on somebody who doesn't do drugs and, you know, you, anyway. My big question is, where were your indicators, Akers, when you were hanging tough with Spalgeric? And he was cruising around with 20 grams of meth and 8 grams of fentanyl on his person, right? He was carrying it around with him. Um, you know, some may want to speculate and say that maybe he was planting drugs on people because 
it's just really crazy how after Spuljeric was arrested, uh, the pullovers with with you know all the pullovers where they would end up searching people's vehicles and finding meth kind of came to an abrupt halt, you know. And you can go on Ironton Auditor's channel and witness some of these some of his older videos where, you know, they were pulling people over left and right, left and right, um, turn signal violations, headlight out, tag light missing, uh, but they were searching their cars every time. Always there was a search. And nine times out of ten where there was a search, they would find drugs. You know, I wonder if Acres indicators didn't have something to do with a lot of that. Um, but yeah, that, that's my question. Where were your indicators, uh, Mr. K-9 unit, Mr. Patrolman Acres, when Spuljeric was posing next to you doing all these gangster poses? I mean, you guys were close, obviously. Um, where were your indicators then? Right? And how come when you did your inventory, when you searched my car, why didn't you take inventory of anything? Why didn't you write it down? He, basically, all he did was search through Sarah's purse, look through our console, dig through our glove box, open the trunk, throw some stuff around. Right? There was no inventory. It was smokescreen. Um, it was a search smokescreen as inventory. So this is the kind of dirty shit these dudes play. This is the kind of dirty shit they do on a daily basis. And nobody questions this shit. You know, when we went to talk to the mayor, he just avoided us. Um, several times we visited the mayor's office. His secretary said that he would get back with us. Um, that he was all about, you know, connecting with the people and answering people's calls and stuff like that. Not ours. Uh, we've went to his office several times. Can't catch him in the office. And if he's in there, his secretary tells us that he's not. But yeah. Way to go, Acres. Mr. Super Cop, Mr. Indicator. Your best buddy. <laughs> 20 grams of meth, man. Come on. That's all I got, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Be well. Have a good day.